Good evening, everyone, and welcome into my home once again for our evening family devotional on this Holy Wednesday of Holy Week. And tomorrow, of course, is Monday, Thursday. And so we'll be having a, uh, our, our worship service for you tomorrow night and on Good Friday, a worship service for you. Uh, normal devotion, kind of a little adapted for Saturday. We're going to celebrate the Easter vigil in a little different way. That's uh, a holy tradition of the church I'll explain to you on Saturday, so tune in for that. And then Sunday, of course, will be our wonderful Easter celebration, communion on Monday, Thursday, and Easter Sunday. So um, I just want you to know that I'm really getting homesick. Um, I love our church, and I love you, our, my church family. And I'll be honest with you, um, being there without you guys is not fun. Uh, it's hard. And it's getting really hard. But I know that I have hope because we will get to see each other again soon. And I'm hearing from you and talking to you. And that's a real blessing. That's a real blessing. So anyways, I love you dearly. And um, I look forward to seeing you real soon. Let's begin with a prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, I give you thanks and praise for this time that we have together as a family in Jesus. Be with us tonight and bless us. Open our hearts and our minds and our souls to gladly hear your word and to respond with a life of thanksgiving and praise and service. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For Wednesday, April 8th, Entrusted. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his home. John chapter 19. My husband and I made our wills some time ago. And one of the questions we had to consider was what could become of our son if we were to die at the same time? Who would take care of him? Who would love him and be there for him? Jesus faced the same sort of question about the people he loved. There was his mother, Mary, who believed in him and followed him, even to Jerusalem and to the shadow of his cross. She couldn't be left alone with that grief or sent back to live with Jesus' hostile brothers. Mary needed someone who would care for her and comfort her. Not say, I told you so, or worse. And so Jesus entrusted her to his disciple, John. John would take her into his own home and care for her as his own mother. This was good for John as well. Jesus knew that Mary could love John as her own son, would comfort him, pray with him, and help him through the devastation of Jesus' death. And so Jesus entrusted them to one another. Jesus could do this with confidence because he entrusted all of his people, whether living or yet unborn, to God the Father. Jesus said, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. John chapter 9. If you trust in Jesus, who died and rose again to set you free from evil, then you are in the Father's hand, and the Holy Spirit is watching over you. What a safer place you could be. Wow, that's pretty powerful to think about, isn't it? That Jesus loves us so much. He loves humans so much that, his, that our lives are valuable to him. And that's why we value life, right? From the unborn through those dying. We value life at all costs. We value life. We value life because it matters so much to God that he sent Jesus to redeem life to redeem us. We value life because on that cross, Jesus himself valued life, making sure that Mary would be taken care of and that John would be taken care of by giving them to each other. We value life because the highest price in the known universe, in all the universe of all time, was paid for said life. The blood of Jesus, his body, his life. So we value life. During a time like this, where we're all kind of quarantined at home or not getting much contact and life seems to be so different right now, to say it in a nice way, I guess, we have time to ponder life and what it really means. And as we ponder life and what it means, I hope we all come to the same conclusion. Life is a gift from God and because it is a gift from God, we have life eternally. 
And our life is nothing but a response to Jesus for what he's done for us. A response of thanksgiving, a response of generosity, a response of being there for others, a response of walking with people, or the response of discipleship, which is being the very presence of Jesus in this world. Life is valuable because God made it so. Jesus gives us a good, good example how to celebrate life right now. He gives us a good example in what he did for Mary and John because he knew they were going to go through a tough time, a time of suffering. And he said to them, take care of each other. The fact is, we need to take care of each other too. We need to take care of our spouses, and our children, our parents. And the list goes on and on. We are, yes, responsible for taking care of our neighbors and our coworkers. It's time that we step up to that plate. And we may think, oh, no, I can't do that. And besides, what will I do? I, I, can't, I have to stay six feet away, or I probably shouldn't be going around people. Yeah, you're right. But there are creative ways to do it. Like we talked about, I think it was Monday night on our devotion, two nights ago, the fact that you can talk to your neighbors, say you're there for them, offer to pray for them. If you know a neighbor's in need, run an errand to the store for them. Or do like Steph and I have done and use our grocery ordering service, which we have come to really love during this time, and have the groceries sent to their house. Buy some candy bars and leave them in your neighbor's mailbox with a little letter that says, I'm thinking of you. Gosh, I don't know. You guys are creative and there are many ways to go about this. But we need each other right now. Maybe the world's starting to get that a little bit. It seems like more and more countries are coming together and working better right now. Even people that we have seen as our enemies in the past are even sending us in the United States things to help take care of our citizens. It seems like neighbors are coming together more. It seems like churches are coming together more. And so there's a blessing coming out of this. We are learning to be better disciples of Jesus. We're learning to value life. We're learning how to take care of each other. After all, are we our brother's keeper? And the answer to that from Jesus is a resounding yes. May you find rest, comfort, and hope in knowing that Jesus has commended you into the Father's hands. And there you find perfect peace, joy, protection, providence, provision. It's yours. May you find comfort that Jesus has blessed you into the hands of your family and your dear friends around you. What a blessing that is. Oh, what a blessing that is. And may you find a response of thanksgiving for that blessing to help others during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving, honor, glory, and praise for what you've done for us. You have opened your hand and satisfied satisfy the desire of every living thing. So much so that you've given us Jesus. So much so that you've taken us into your hand uh, to, and that you, we are with you forever and you are with us. So much so that you have literally taken care of our greatest need, the need of salvation and have bestowed upon us wonderful eternal life with you in heaven. Teach us to value life at all stages, from the unborn to those who are dying. Teach us to value life and to celebrate the life that you've given us by responding to you, Lord Jesus, with a heart of thanksgiving and praise and intentionally seeking how to be your disciples, the presence of Jesus in our communities, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our online classrooms. Yes, Lord, may this be so. Provide for us opportunities to show your love and to be your people and equip us to do that. Dispelling all fear and doubt. For if you are with us, who can be against us? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, have a great night. Thanks again for coming into our home. I'm looking forward to celebrating you this wonderful week and Easter uh, the rest of this week as we praise God and glorify him for the death of our Savior and the resurrection of our Savior. God's peace be with you. Night, night. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.